What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Lockdown Badgers. We have a great show today. We're talking Jay Harper, Gideon Atuka, in-state recruiting, Liam Andrews, a ton to get into on today's Lockdown Badgers with the great Brian Smith on Wisconsin, and let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, your team every single day. And let's just get into it. We're bringing Brian Smith on, uh, the great recruiting insider for Lockdown, the entire Lockdown Network. Brian, happy Thursday. What's going on, my friend? Well, it's uh, it's the middle of my maddening time. Uh, we got about two more weeks of commitment palooza. And uh, Wisconsin's been a part of that, which we'll talk about today. But uh, yeah, it's 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, brother. No, I love it. That's And that's why we bring him here, because he brings expert insight that we cannot get anywhere else. We're smarter because of it. And Brian, I've, I've put some of the comments up from, from people listening to the show. People love you. People love the honesty and frank insights. And I think that's something unique that you bring to it. You're not sugarcoating anything. I'm not real good at sugarcoating. It's probably why I'm single. But. No, <laughs> I love it. Um, not, not the single part, the not sugarcoating part. Uh, it, it helps me be better at my job. <laughs> well, let, let's get into that. Um, well, I want to lead off with good news. We haven't talked since a couple commits popped. Uh, Jay Harper, cornerback out of Valley, Alabama, six foot, one hundred sixty-five pounds, getting in those in that area for measurables. High three star, had a had a pretty good offer list. Uh, Georgia Tech was in on him at some point. Tennessee, Mississippi State, Mizzou. What did you like about Jay Harper when you saw him on film? What kind of prospect are the Badgers getting here? Two things. Number one, where he plays. Uh, he's, he's playing against some good players, and that's the first thing. The one thing about down south, it can be some podunk county school, but they're still going to play other schools that have guys. So he's not going to be shocked when he comes to the Big Ten. Number two, he's a kid that can play the nickel spot and maybe eventually be an outside guy. Maybe they might start him there anyway, but it's hard physically to take on some of the bigger receivers when you're buck 65. In a year or so, his body's going to change. Like Wisconsin strength program is pretty famous for doing some incredible things. So – when he's 180, we're going to be talking about a different player. So I like him at nickel short term, and he can move his feet. He can play in short area. He can break on the ball. This is the kind of guy that if you're going to take the step forward that I always say on this show, got to get some dudes on the outside, brother. Mm-hmm. Outside the numbers, Wisconsin has not even been in the stratosphere where they needed for as long as I can remember. So this is a step in the right direction. And you talked about one of the things you hit on that I wanted to talk about was the frame, get him in, in a real program in a couple of years, see what you got. This to me feels like just an extension of what Luke Fickle has done since he's gotten here. Find toolsy guys on the outside with frame or projectability, maybe not the polish, maybe not the finished product, but guys that you can look at in two years and say, uh, yeah, I can see more there than what you're getting right now. They're not going to get the kid that's the number one corner at IMG right now. They're just not. That kid, by the way, is committed to Georgia. I know you're shocked by that. Yeah, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis Robinson, the fourth. Yeah, he, he was polished as a junior more so than a lot of kids in college. And that's the difference. Is there a lot of difference between Ellis and this kid otherwise? No. Is learning corner easy, though? Definitely no. So mm-hmm. credit to Ellis Robinson for getting to that point already. But anybody can do it. There, there are guys – that they took at Cincinnati, and I'm like, who the heck is this? You know what I mean? And then they ended up being good. Obviously, Sauce Gardner is the easy one, but he was six two and a half or whatever it was. He, he was really juicy. This is the kind of kid that they still took. And they had a couple other corners that didn't get any pub in Cincinnati. This kid fits that profile, and they had like Mac offers and stuff. This kid had SEC offers. He's mm-hmm. better than some of the kids they took at Cincinnati. And they already have proven that they can escalate a kid's ability if they get the right frame. So if I'm a Wisconsin fan, I'm good. I mean, it's it's a proven data point because they did it with multiple guys at corner. And if you're going to run the style of defense that Fickle wants, you're not going to have any success without some guys that can play man because they're going to blitz. And I mean, it's a complete overhaul from what you know that conservative three four defense they did was great against the run. But, you know, they didn't have as much man capability necessary. That 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 is going to be in the in the rearview mirror very quickly. What are you looking for when you evaluate, when you're watching film of a high school cornerback? Um, it feels like that's not the easiest position to evaluate. A lot of times you're not getting thrown mm-hmm. at. 
What are you looking for? Physically, it's the easiest. It's just what you said there. If you're at a school that stinks and you're just like the one guy that's a stud, teams almost always put their best corner at free safety. Why? Because they're just going to throw up the other corner. He's going to be bored all night. Screw you. Let's go throw up this other kid. He's a normal guy that's going to get a job one day. Put him at free safety and you just kind of have to project. This kid has played in a team that's got enough players where he got some action. And you just look for three basic things. Top end speed, the ability to flip his hips, and then stop and start. Like changing direction is, is part of that's just innate. Fast twitch muscle fibers. You're born with more than or less than other people. Deion Sanders, I'd love to know what his percentage was. It's got to be the highest of all time. Mm. But corners have that innate ability, and it's not something you can really change after you're born. It's the most natural position for a kid to play or not. And this kid can move his feet in a, in a way that most, most guys just don't. So I think he's going to be kind of the normal fit. He just, again, adding weight, it, watching his film is not that difficult. Seeing what he can do long-term is going to be about him, though. How much does he want it? What's he going to do when he eats or doesn't eat? When he eats, all those little finite points are the difference between the guys that become starters for the Badgers and the guys standing on the sidelines watching the game. Are there certain we've talked about this before with other positions? Um, running back, we've talked about it, receiver, we've talked about it. Is are there certain schools you look for um when it comes to quarterback offer ratings? Is this school is on on this guy that makes me look again potentially? Believe it or not, it, it's a school you probably hate their guts, but uh, it's Iowa. Yeah, they, they for the longest time they had either like they were top five every year in the NFL for most DB, it was ridiculous, and it's just because they're so fundamentally sound. And they, you know what. It wasn't like they were getting the kid from IMG either. They did it pretty much the way Fickle did. You got to give Iowa credit. Wisconsin's had a few of those guys. Jamar Fletcher, I mean, I can't remember. There's a few. But if you're going to take that next step, part of it is the scheme you run. Kids would rather play in man because they're all, especially down here where I live in Florida, the kids ever, all of them think they're the next Deion Sanders, which is ridiculous. But the bottom line is if you play an exciting scheme, you're going to get more talent. You notice where he's from? Alabama. When was the last time Wisconsin signed a kid from freaking Alabama? You got to go back a ways. There was a running back they got, Bradrick Shaw, maybe 10 years ago. I mean, you got to go back a ways. That's what I'm saying. Like, those kids could – they don't know where on a map Wisconsin is, and I'm not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Kids in the South have no idea what's going on up north. None. So, for them to get that kid and some of the other kids that they're getting from the East Coast, getting interest from kids in, like, South Florida, et cetera, that's part of it. From hey, we were at Cincinnati. This is what we did. This kid wasn't even as good as you are now, and I got him to the NFL. Those are selling points. So I think that Wisconsin's headed in the right direction. Oh, that's great stuff there. Um, we're gonna take a quick break. Come back. We're gonna talk getting Atuka. I'm really curious. He's one of the most interesting prospects for a couple of reasons in this class to me. I'm curious to get your take on him. And then we're gonna touch on in-state recruiting as well with Brian and see where he's at there. Plus, finish up with a little talk on Liam Andrews. A lot coming up. We're going to take a quick break, though. Come over to our friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. The, the place we go to bet, the place um, Locked On does, the place I do. It's a great time now with baseball going on. Get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. FanDuel.com slash Locked On. It's safe, secure, easy to use. And if you're like me, I, I bet with my heart I've talked about it. I already have the Niners winning the Super Bowl, the Suns winning the finals, the Braves winning, you know, winning the pennant. All of that, I'm going to parlay it together on FanDuel. I'm going to bet with my heart, but I'm going to have fun with it. That's what I do on FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash on, Get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you uh, sign up. First time users when you sign up now. All right, we're going to uh, also want to say thank you to everybody tuning into the show as always. I really do appreciate it. Let's get Brian back on here. Continue talking about um, a bit of a an interesting prospect to me. <clears throat> yes. Uh, <laughs> Getting a Tuka, not necessarily fitting the mold of um, a, a, a high-profile running back recruit, 5'9", kind of a bowling ball guy, 220. Sure. A couple decent offers, you know, mid-three-star guy coming out of, out of out of Maryland. What were your thoughts when you watched uh, getting a Tuka on film? That guy is unbelievably determined. Uh, he's not going to win any laser-timed 40-yard dashes, but he's built like a bowling ball. Maurice Jones drew. I'm sure he's going to get compared to him the rest of his life. I get it. Not the tallest guy. He's listed at five, nine, and I highly doubt he's that tall, but he just makes plays, man. And he's kind of an inspiring player. 
there were a couple of plays on his highlight film that I'm sure you noticed as well. His O-line did him no favors. And then he just carried five guys with him an extra five, 10 yards. And then he did it again and again. And it's like, holy cow, like his leg drive and his determination are the definition of a guy that really loves football. So you can't teach the, the leg drive and, and the hips and all the power, but the determination is something that's all on him. And I loved watching this film. Do I wish he was faster? Sure. He's probably a four, seven kid, four, seven, five, but he's 220 pounds. And he, he's a kid that if you get in front of him and you don't make a good decision to go low, that's on you. What happens from there is, is your decision and you got to deal with it. You got to make, there's going to be defensive backs making business decisions um, coming up. Oh, he's an ankle guy. He's an ankle guy. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to, I, I have this thought with a guy like Atuka where there's, there's value in being unique. Right. There's there's maybe a short value, a short yardage value there, a goal line value there, maybe the ability to get, just present a different look for a defense from the, the mainstay Badger backs. Is is he a change of pace guy to you or do you think there's more there for for Atuka? I think he could be a starter. I mean, it's possible, but it depends on what you want to do offensively and it depends on the game, too. I, I don't think they'll be loyal to just one running back. And what I mean by that is. They, they were pretty liberal with changing guys in and out of the lineup at Cincinnati, running back's a spot that it's it's better to do that because of the pounding they take. But unless they get, you know, Clement or somebody like that, you know, that's that's one thing. But they could play him, and he could be good in pass protection. He's mm-hmm. so stout. Running the football is only a small fraction. you got to catch the ball, and you got to block now. If your quarterback's getting hit, and Wisconsin's going to throw the ball more than fans of the Badgers are used to, if they don't get guys that block well running back, those guys are going to be standing next to Luke Fickle. So part of that is going to be determined a little bit differently. And I also think that he's going to be a package guy. Short yardage in red zone, it's not real hard for me to pick which guy they're most likely going to go with. I mean, nobody wants to get in front of him, as we already discussed. So probably a number two, but don't don't completely count him out as eventually being a starter for the Badgers. Well, and I would I would make the point as well. Not every not every recruit is a home run recruit. Like it's okay to hit a double, right? Like if if he comes that in and correct. he's solid number two and a good goal line guy, like that's a win on the recruiting trail. It can't be your number one back, but that's still a win. Well, here, <laughs> your point is right, and it, it's your offensive fit, man. Like, what are you trying mm-hmm. to do? So if they go get their next running backs five nine one seventy five, but he has jets, like the guy that let's just say they get a guy like that in the class of twenty five. Well, then you have a bulldozer, and then you got a jet. Yeah, and you complement them. You run them, put them both in the backfield at the same time. One goes jet motion, and then you run the fullback dive with the big guy. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can complement. So it's okay to have different parts. You just got to know how to use them. Yeah, that's well said. I, I want to shift here and touch on something. Just we, We've talked about it a lot locally. Um, we're very hyper-focused on the Badgers, obviously, but from a national perspective, what what are you thinking when you see shifting to in-state recruiting for Luke Fickle? What are you seeing thinking when you see five of the top six prospects leave the state? When you see three three guys that the Badgers wanted had offers to leave the state, specifically offensive linemen, is that does that raise your eyebrows or is this a first year thing for Fickle and it it's just kind of a not a huge deal? He'll figure it out. I think he'll figure it out. It just may not be with the same staff members. There's no pretty here in no way, shape, or form in a state like Wisconsin that has, I would say, five to ten kids a year they can recruit, um, give or take. And, you know, every year is a little different. You can't lose your top in-state guys, especially early, several of them, to rivals. And I know they lost the one kid, the offensive one, that's so good to Minnesota, and he's a transplant. It's a different deal. But they lost him to a rival, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Penn State's getting, like, got the best running back out of the state. I mean, what the heck is Something is off. I don't know what it is. And, and for the people that want to hear all sunshine and rainbows, you can turn this off now because there's no positive here. They failed. And they failed with some really good players that might even have NFL potential. That's going to hurt you at some point down the road. So I love the running back that Penn State got out of Wisconsin, just as an example. I remember seeing his film, and I'm like, dang, this guy's explosive. He, he He's a guy that can play in the slot, do whatever. He'll probably go to Wisconsin. I look up and he's committed to Penn State. I'm like, how does that happen? So they need to figure out something. And if, you know, Fickle's not going to sit there and take it, 
My guess is some guys are going to step up on the recruiting trail. Maybe Luke's part of it. I don't know. Or some guys are going to be gone because you're not going to take that next step as a program, losing the best players to your rivals. And that, that hits on a, an interesting discussion point that Badger fans have been having back and forth. And we don't really know. The, the question is, does it matter if you lose in-state talent if you replace it with equal talent out of state? And I've, I've been under the opinion that Wisconsin can't hit the ceiling if they don't get the in-state guys because those should be the easier wins, in my opinion. Well, you're going to – traditionally, you're going to hit a higher percentage in state. It's not a rocket science adventure. There is only a few schools that recruit primarily out, state, out of state and do well. Only a few. And, you know, it's the, the schools you might think, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Georgia, Oregon. They're, they're, there's different reasons for each of them. Wisconsin is not that way. They're not going to South Florida like Ohio State did in getting Jeremiah Smith. They're not. So you have to hit on the in-state kids losing. I think it's Corey Smith is the running back. State. You can't lose him. You know, Michigan went into Ohio this year and got a great running back. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Ohio State went and got the number one running back at St. Thomas Aquinas down in South Florida, which is one of the top five programs in high school football. They'll be okay. It's just true. There, there are certain schools that just have different benefits. Wisconsin's not on that level in terms of recruiting acumen. Losing in-state kids for them is a big, big deal. And I want to finish up here because we talked a little off air about Nathan Roy, the the blue chip offensive tackle going to Minnesota. Uh, even if not going to Wisconsin is a bit of a surprise. How surprising nationally was it for Minnesota to land Nathan Roy? Like everybody's like, what? <laughs> like, I don't think here, his defense and the situation's defense, not everybody follows Wisconsin recruiting or like what's going on with these kids. Most people probably didn't know he was from another area originally. I didn't either. And that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So like he's a California, Arizona, something like that out West, if I remember correctly. Then he moved and he's a transplant. That makes the recruitment go all haywire because you don't have as many barometers to choose from and it's a little more open. But still, like, I'm trying to think that there can't be more than three or four kids historically ever that have went to Minnesota on that level, you know, in state or out of state. Like, out of state, that might be their best recruit ever. It is. It, well, it's at least PJ Flex. Uh, it's his highest rated recruit ever. So it's a huge win for them. Um, we're going to take a quick break, come back with a top 100 uh, lineman that the Badgers still have a shout at. We're going to ask Brian what he thinks of Liam Andrews coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. And a quick thank you for everybody listening. Really do appreciate it as we continue to build this community. Um, let, thank you. Just thank you so much for allowing us to be a small part of your day. All right, let's get Brian back on here. Uh, waste no time. Uh, Brian, one of the big fish that's still out there that Wisconsin's had on an official visit, really, really talented player out of Massachusetts, Liam Andrews, top 100 kid, 6'5", 260. I love the film. Uh, did, I want to start here. Do the Badgers have a chance here with Liam Andrews, in your opinion? I think they do, but his recruitment's a little goofier than most because teams are recruiting in different ways. Like South Carolina's recruiting him to play defensive line. Is every school truly doing that, and are they doing it wholeheartedly? When I'd first seen him, I'd, I'd heard he was probably going to end up being an offensive lineman. And, like, Wisconsin's history with the offensive line is obviously tremendous. So how does he really evaluate it? If Does he think everybody really is going to give him a shot to play D-line? Does he really want to play D-line? Is he sure about it? I wouldn't touch his recruitment with a 10-foot pole as far as picking it. Mm. for his first commitment, and I also wouldn't pick it in terms of where he signs. Kids can change their mind based on how their senior year goes if they're two-way players. That's the other thing. And his recruitment is odd because, like, South Carolina and Wisconsin are two of the – just as an example, are two of the schools for him. They don't have anything in common. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a kid from the Northeast. It's a very unusual recruitment, but to your point, though, he's a really good football player. And I think he can play D-line at the SEC Big 12 level, Big 10 level, ACC. But I would still prefer, if I had my choice, I think he should play offensive line. Well, and that's it's funny you brought that up. The Badgers are actually recruiting him at, at the defensive line spot. That's where they've targeted him as well, like South Carolina. Um, I wonder if the kids are preferring that and coaches are just telling I don't know. But I, I he can play it, but I just think, I think he can be an NFL offensive line. Just my opinion. What do you see upside on the defensive line? If, if that is where the Badgers are targeting him, if that's where he comes uh, on board for Madison, where, where do you see? Because I see a pretty twitchy guy for a big athlete. He is. He is. Like, he slants well. 
uh, watching his film, like he'll take an angle and he'll get his, his arm underneath the offensive lineman and he can dip pretty good for a big kid. He's, I don't know, six, five or more. I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Like if you're talking, let's say Wisconsin goes to the playoff in two years, if they're playing Georgia, is he going to do that against Georgia's offensive linemen? Yeah. I mean, these are the only things that matter. Like the, the elite elite school, can you be a guy that's on par with that? But as an offensive lineman, I think he can. Mm. Um, he would probably play strong side defensive end in a three man line and Luke would slam him and do different things with him. And he would fit, he would fit, but I don't think he would be as dominant as I, I could see him as a guard or a tackle on the offensive side. No, and it does seem like most programs are, are recruiting him as an offensive lineman to that point. And maybe now this is interesting. Now you mentioned South Carolina, Wisconsin as a bit of an outlier. Maybe they're using the defensive line. Maybe that's what he wants. Right, and that's my guess because this this is not as prevalent as it used to be. So yeah, usually guys kind of specify by their sophomore years if they think they're power five, and they just focus on one thing. He's done it differently, and it's maybe it's because it's the program he's at needed more help. I, I have no idea, but he's a good athlete, so I give him credit for trying. No, great stuff as always from Brian. Um, but once again, just thank you for for jumping on the show. People really love the insight and the frankness. I know I do as well. We get smarter because you're here. Uh, with that said, you did mention if Wisconsin's in the playoffs in two years, um, we're going to pin that at the top of the show as a prediction from Brian Smith as a possibility. <laughs> hey, with 12 teams, it's very possible. It, it That's really very is. true. It's very true. All right, everybody. Uh, coming up tomorrow, we're going to talk with Rajiv, get him on the show. We're talking some odds coming up with the, the college football season. Thank you again to Brian. Everybody go follow FB Scout underscore Florida. Get all of Brian's latest insight there on Wisconsin, and we'll talk to all of you tomorrow.